Hello, my name is Nathan Taylor, known as Sockmetician here on YouTube, on Ravelry, Instagram and Twitter, and this is a tutorial on how to work German short rows. German short rows are a great alternative to the traditional wrap and turn style of uh, creating short rows, and the best thing about German short rows is not only are they super easy to work, they are also completely hole free and pretty much invisible to the eye. And that's why I love them. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, you work along your row. This is how to do it on the right side. It's slightly different for right side and wrong side. I'll demonstrate both in this video. Work along your row until the stitch you want to work the German short row into, which is this light blue stitch here on my left needle. The first stage is to knit that stitch exactly as you would normally. Then you need to turn your work to the wrong side. So there's no wrapping or anything to be done like that. Uh, the next thing you do is making sure your working yarn is to the front of the work. Regardless of whether you're working on the right side or the wrong side, always do this next stage with the yarn at the front. You just slip one stitch, the stitch you've just worked, purlwise from the left needle to the right. And to complete the short row, you lift, pull up on this working yarn here and take it to the back of the work over the top of the needle. And because I'm working on a purl row now, now that I've turned the work, I bring the yarn back to the front and then I can purl back the way I came as normal. But let's just examine what that's done. You see, uh, this is the stitch I worked the German short row into and it's lifted the purl bump from the row below up over and onto the top of the needle, creating this, this sort of interlocked double stitch. Can you see how those two strands are twined around each other? Well, that is the German short row double stitch. I'll talk more about that in a moment. So how do we do it on the wrong side of the work? Well, I'm going to purl up to the point where I want to make my next German short row stitch, I should say. Nearly there. One more stitch to work. So you can see here I've already got one of those German short row double stitches here. So the next stitch I want to work into is two stitches away from that last double stitch. This is dark blue stitch here. So on the, on the wrong side, the first thing to do is to purl the stitch you want to work the German short row into. And once again, we turn the work at that point. Now we have the working yarn to the back. We need to bring that to the front. Before we do the slipping, we need to make sure the working yarn is at the front. As I said before, regardless of whether that's on the right side row or a wrong side row, we always do this next stage with the working yarn in the front. Then we can slip the stitch we've just worked. And once more, we pull up on the working yarn, distorting the stitch below and taking it round to the back. Then we can carry on knitting, now that we're on a right side row, exactly as we normally would, working away from the German short row stitch. Again, what does that look like? Going back to it, here you can see uh, the stitch below has been pulled up on top of the needle and has this interlocked stitch here. You might notice a slight difference between the ones made on the right side and the ones made on the wrong side. The ones made on the wrong side have no twist in them at all, just the, the little interlocking there of the two uh, strands, one for the front and one for the back. It is slightly different on uh, stitches worked on the right side. You can see here the back, the pink yarn, is slightly twisted over. That's perfectly normal and won't make any difference to how it looks or feels when you've completed uh, on the next row where you work into those double stitches. And that's what I'm going to do now. So assuming I've done as many short rows as I want to, and I'm going to uh, now completely work through those, when I get to one of those double, uh, those double stitches, what do I do? Well, I treat those double stitches exactly as if they were one stitch, one normal stitch. So I'm going to knit into both strands of that double stitch exactly as I would if it were a single ordinary knit stitch. No difference at all. And then I continue knitting. And coming up here I have another German short row double stitch which I'm just going to knit into 
as if it were one single. I've split the yarn there, that was a bit rubbish. Let's go in again as if it were one ordinary knit stitch and then continue knitting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just work uh, another German short row here on the right side so we can go back and we can see exactly what that's done over there on the other side. So I'm going to knit into the stitch I want to do, turn the work, my yarn is in front so I can uh, slip that work stitch purl wise from left needle to right lift and distort the purl bump and bring the yarn to the front for purling back along. So now I'm going to whiz past all of the stitches that I had uh, just worked until I get to the double stitches on the other side of this little piece of knitting here and then I can show you once again how we treat the double stitches when we're working purl stitches, it's exactly the same. We still treat them as if they were one single stitch, one single entity, and they have two strands, but we don't care about that. We just work them as if they were one. Here I am. So you can see now, here's the double stitch, and it, because it was created on the right side, it's the one that's a little bit twisted. You can see how those two pink strands are crossing in front of each other. You don't need to worry about that at all. You just go in to both of them together, and purl them as if they were one single purl stitch. There's another one just here, and I can show you that again. So again, this time it's the blue stitches which are crossed and the pink ones coming over from the other side. Go into both of those front strands as if they were one single stitch and purl them together. So that's how to do it. Let me show you one more time how to create a uh, German short row on the purl side. I'm going to work into this pink stitch, so I knit it, I turn the work. Then I have to make sure, very important, that I bring the working yarn to the front. Then I can slip that stitch back over to the left needle, lift, pull on the working yarn, pull it over to the back, creating our twisted double stitch, and then continue knitting as normal. So let's go and inspect those short rows that I've created. So here's the section of the knitting where I created the extra short rows. You can see that the, the knitting knitted fabric is bulging slightly, that's the shaping caused by the short rows, but if you look, you can pull down on this and you just can't see any holes anywhere. You can't see any stitches that look like they might have had anything untoward going on with them. German short rows, I'm really, really yanking on this, uh, German short rows are so invisible, I can't even feel with my fingers on the fabric what's happened there. So there's no picking up of wraps because there are no wraps and that is how you create German short rows. They are fantastic, you may never wrap and turn again.